So um, at this point, we now know half of Symphony. Actually, half of Symphony is just this routing controller flow. Create a route, create a controller, return a response, go have a sandwich or coffee. That's it. There's nothing else to it. Okay. From this point on, the second half of Symphony is all about how do I actually create that page. So right now we're just you know returning the random number. So very simple. We don't need any extra tools to do that. And if your life were really that simple, then that's all you would ever do. Um, in reality, of course, we have lots of complicated things like we want to render templates, we want to send mail, we want to log things, you know, all those other bits and pieces of, of a web application. So the second half of Symphony is all about providing the developer, us, a set of optional tools for doing those things. So for example, if you want to send an email in Symphony, there is an optional tool that you can use to send emails. Keyword being optional. You could never use it if you don't want to. You could say, you know what? I'm good. I send emails my own way, so I don't need that part of you, Symphony. So you could actually use no other part of Symphony. Another big piece we, that we won't have time to get into, it, but is, um, is form processing, which is a very complicated thing. So Symphony has a whole form framework, and it has objects that help you deal with form submits and validation and all that stuff. You can choose to use that, or you can say, I'm good. I'm going to do something else. So like, feel free to opt into the stuff that, uh, that part of Symphony. Um, right now, is our controller class extending anything? Is the default controller class, are we extending anything? Yeah, no, we're not extending anything. So um, again, that goes back to the thing where Symphony doesn't care what your controller is. It doesn't care what you do inside of there. It's just a function. So you don't have to extend some Symphony base controller or anything like that. It's just a function. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to render a template. And this is going to be the first time where we're going to opt in, we're going to choose to use one of Symphony's tools. One of Symphony's tools helps you render templates and we're going to choose to use it. As soon as you do that, we will extend a Symphony base controller, but the only reason we're extending Symphony's base controller is because it gives us access to these objects that we, like I said, we can just choose to use if we want to. Okay? So um, I'm going to make that bigger. On that same page that we're, we were at earlier, that creating pages, I want you to follow along with step three. And it's very simple. We're going to take what we have currently and we're going to render a template. Because of course in real life, right, we don't want to have HTML inside of our controller. That's kind of ugly. So following with step three, we're going to render a template. Symphony, again, of course, like anything in Symphony, you can do whatever you want. But Symphony uses Twig templates. So that if you haven't used Twig before, it's a templating uh, syntax. It's quite easy actually. And you'll notice in the code examples that it actually says has class random controller extends controller. That's what I'm talking about. You will actually extend Symphony's base controller now. But the only reason we're doing that is because it gives us access to uh, these useful objects. So again, first part of Symphony was routes and controllers. The second part of Symphony is learning about what objects you have access to. Like how do I send emails? How do I render templates? It's about learning about those objects that Symphony offers you. did was compare would be like you have some like um, debug route, some debug page. Ah. Well, I think I have extra yeah, I have extra credit on this one as well. So make remember to do the extra credit if you are doing awesome and working ahead. How many people have this working? Most everybody okay cool. I'm gonna keep going then. 
All right, so the takeaways from this are we're using an optional tool. Sim so Symfony has the second part of Symfony is all these useful objects. And quite literally, there's a bunch of objects floating around. And these objects are like tools. One of those objects is called the templating object. Um, by the way, you'll also hear the, like, the term service. We're going to talk about what a service is in a second. But a service is just a word for a useful object. So service and useful object are the same things. So there's an object called a templating object. And if you want to render templates, you can use it. Right now in your controller, you guys are all saying this arrow render using a render function. That's just a shortcut that says go find the templating object and call a method on it to render a template. So we're just calling this arrow render, but behind the scenes it's using this templating object. Um, what type of, let's see, our controller, our, our index action, what type of value do you guys think it's returning? Bingo. Why? Why? What made you say that? Exactly. Because we always need to return a response. So even that render function, what it does is it goes and renders a template, gets the string content, and then puts that into a response object for us. It's still a response object. So we're still returning a response object. We're just using an external tool to help us do that. Um, now, you guys all created a twig template and had little squiggly curly braces inside of there. I'm not going to talk about twig. I'm going to talk about twig for like 30 seconds only because it's actually very, very easy. The two things you need to know in twig, well, there's only two syntaxes in twig. It's either curly curly or curly percent. Curly curly is the echo. So if you're printing something, you're using curly curly. So you guys all have like curly curly number, I think, because you're printing a number variable. Um, also in your controller, when you call this arrow render, you're passing it an array. That's the array of variables you want to pass to your template. So you're kind of passing a, a number variable from your controller into your Twig template. So once you're in Twig, if you want to print something, it's curly curly. Cool? You can use, uh, just like PHP, you can use, you know, there's, you can have strings like quote hello, you have variables, you can add things together. The insides of Twig are exactly like PHP. Uh, if you are not printing something, but you're doing something, like you're doing an if statement, or you're doing a loop over things, or something like that, then it's curly brace percent. So it's curly curly for print, or curly brace percent. Uh, I want you guys to Google for the Twig docs. So find the Twig documentation. It's twig.sensiolabs.org. But if you Google for Twig templating, you'll find this. So Twig is a totally independent library from Symfony. But if you use Symfony, you're probably going to use Twig. And it's a really nice library. And go to the documentation page on Twig's docs and scroll down to the bottom of the Twig documentation. So go to find the Twig homepage, click documentation, scroll down to the bottom. You should see this beautiful table. This is everything that you can do inside of Twig. And remember how there's the curly brace percent things? There's only a finite number of things you can do with that curly brace percent. Like I said, you could do if statements with curly brace percent or for statements for loop. This uh, list along the left here is 100% of the things that you can do with curly brace percent. So curly, curly brace percent, if, for, um, those are really the most common ones, and then other things. So even the curly brace percent only has these 20 possibilities. Everything else is kind of curly curly. Yep. Ah, good, good. There is no for each in Twig. There's only a for. And the four can go over like uh, loops, like over an array of things, or you can use four to, uh, like a PHP four to do like one to ten. So they're just four, but it does everything. Yep. So if you want to know how to use any of those, click them, and you're good to go. That's basically it. Curly percent to do something along the left, or curly curly to print something. Um, everything else is just like PHP. You have functions. You see, there's something in there called filters. Those are no different than, those are, uh, well, we don't have that in PHP, but it's a simple idea. That's an example of a filter. 
it's just kind of a cute thing. You can do, whenever you have a filter, you just take some va uh, value and you do the pipe symbol and then the name of the filter. So upper is a built-in filter and it just takes the, what, the value on the left and kind of runs it through that filter. So upper, obviously this would uppercase hello. So filters are just kind of, they're kind of like functions, they just have a different syntax. Cool? And that's basically it. And of course we're not going to get into this, but of course you can add your own functions and filters and all of that stuff into, uh, into Twig and you will do that and it's a cool thing. Um, I've even seen uh, Twig has things like um, this. Twig also has a little syntax like that. It's called a test. You can say if something is and then there's built-in tests like divisible by or odd or even. So you can say if is even or is odd. Um, you can even build your own custom tests. Like, uh, and, and it's a cool example because I've, saw on, uh, I've seen a project before where they were selling a product and they needed to know in their Twig templates whether or not the current logged in user had purchased this product. So they would write things like this if product is purchased. And that purchased test was something that they had implemented that would go look at the user and look at that product and see if they purchased it. So it's kind of just a nice syntax thing. All right. The one other thing that you guys have is that extends key on the top of your template, right? Like extends colon colon base.html.twig. So this is a uh, template inheritance. And that base.html.twig is a real template that already exists in your project. So where does that template live? I'm sure some of you guys have already found it. Bingo. So look in app slash resources slash views and you'll see that base.html.twig template there. So app slash resources slash views. And what do you guys see inside of there? What's that? Some HTML code. Yeah, some HTML and then these little blocks, right? Block body, block title, block style sheets. Placeholders. Exactly, they're placeholders. So the way that Twig template inheritance works, I will tell you and then you will understand that it's not too difficult of an idea, is that when we say extends base.html.twig, we say I want to take my content and dress inside of this layout. So I basically want to, uh, I want to use that layout, but then I want to insert my own content in places. So base.html.twig has that block body end block. That's a placeholder. And then in our child template, our index.html.twig, we override the block body because we have block body and then we have some content and we have another block body. So if you guys wanted to customize the title of the page, You'll see that the parent template base.html.twig has a uh, block title. So inside of your child template, you could just say block title and then change the title, change the title block. And by the way, these block names aren't important. It's not like you have to have a block called body. You can call these whatever you want and you can create as many blocks as you want. So go crazy with blocks. You can put blocks inside of blocks and do all kinds of craziness. Yeah. Uh, I come from an easy background. Mm -hmm. Ah, good. You can have like uh, five different designs, and each design can inherit uh, stuff from other designs. So, uh, so Almost like grab a piece of this one and a piece of that one. Designs, you have the, the uh, optimal design, which is like the newest design, mm -hmm. and if you don't have the uh, uh, functionality built yet for something, it goes layer down, then layer down, layer down. Uh, I think so, though maybe not exactly to the point that you're saying, because I think it, in what you're saying, there's, you can, you can have 10 of design. Yeah, it's almost like it's almost a theming thing, right? Yeah. yeah, it's like looking this. So there is in Symphony. So there's two answers to that. One, there is a bundle in Symphony uh, centered around theming, where you can you can sort of say the current theme is blue 
And then, it, and then when you render twig, when you say render like this twig template, it actually goes through a process of, well, let me first look in the blue directory. And if it's not in the blue directory, let me look, fall back to this directory and look for a template there. So that has nothing to do with twig, but there's a bundle built in that'll do that kind of theming thing. And then specifically for multiple inheritance with blocks, and you'll, you should look into this because I think you'll at least like it, even if it's not exactly uh, what you're talking about, it could be used. Um, there is a, a, a tag, so in the reference section along the left there, there's one called use. And it's a way for you to basically um, go reference a completely external template and, and use blocks from it. If you're new to inheritance, don't run into that too far because it's kind of like doing something more advanced. But it's a way for you to basically go say, I just want to go find this one block that lives inside this template over here and grab it and use it. So it's not, you can almost use blocks like functions. So that's technically Twig's multiple inheritance feature. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, let's keep going. This is an easy one. So I've said a couple times that Symfony is, is uh, through its evolution, is getting smaller, which is a good thing. So what I want you guys to do is we're going to make our project a little bit smaller. Again, I, this kind of shows off some of the flexibility, but this is actually a good thing to do to make things smaller. I want you to move your index.html.twig template that you have currently. That currently lives in your bundle, correct? Let's move it outside of our bundle and instead put it inside of a app resources views directory and you'll have to create that random directory. And what we're doing here, let me give you the big picture, is we are little by little um, putting more things in the app directory and less things in our bundle. And there's no technical reason for that. It's just that by doing this, we're going to kind of remove a few extra layers of directories and things like that. So we're trying to make our project smaller. So move that index.html twig into your template. The result here is going to be the same. Again, my goal is to just make things a little bit smaller. So once you move that template into the other location, you'll change your controller code slightly. Very slightly, not in any too, too significant of a way. So that's working for you. So you may have heard me just say this. But the only reason that we have this random directory here is just because our controller is called random controller. So I'm just kind of choosing to group my templates by, by a controller name. But technically, we could, if we wanted to, just put index.html.twig right here. And if we did that, we would just render index.html.twig. So you can use a subdirectory or not use a subdirectory. It's a good idea, but it's, there's no technical reason for it. So the render call becomes very simple now. When you call render inside of Symfony, the first place it looks is inside of app resources views. So we just say render random slash index.html.twig, and it looks inside of app resources views for that path. Very simple, no magic. It just looks inside that directory. Um, you guys removed it now because I actually didn't want to talk about it too much. But when you put your template inside of your bundle, you actually need to use a weird colon syntax to do that. So a second ago, you had like app bundle colon random colon index.html twig. So if you do put your templates in a bundle, that's cool. You just have this a weird symphony specific shortcut syntax. If you put it in your app resources directory, it's just, it's just really simple. It's just the path of the template that you want. Yep. <laughs> That's a good question. This is the best practice. Why? Also, I would think, What's that? I would think it would be the other way around. I think you would want to keep your templates with your bundle. 
it used to be that way. It's changing right now. It used to be that way because we used to have those multiple bundles, so it made more sense. But if you start with the assumption that your project's only going to have one bundle, then uh, putting things in the app directory and the app bundle are really equivalent. Sort of like they're both completely coupled to your application. My one app bundle or my one app directory. So at that point, from an organizational standpoint, there's no advantage. And so this has the added advantage that um, uh, you don't have to use the weird colon syntax. Oh, such a good question. Uh, on a technical standpoint, no. This conversation is all happening behind the scenes right now. You can build a Symfony application without a bundle entirely. However, there are a couple things that having a bundle makes easier. And so we had this conversation that says, should we not have a bundle and make those things harder? Or should we have uh, some, a directory that's not a bundle and a bundle? But that would confuse people because they would say, should I put it in the directory that's not a bundle? Or should I put it in the bundle? So we decided to have a bundle, even though really you could build a Symfony app without a bundle. Yeah, really, really good question. So when you read this official Symfony docs right now, it will tell you to put things in the bundles. But what I'm showing you is going to be uh, best practices that are going to be um, kind of like modified over the next few months, uh, which I really like. Because like I said, it makes things smaller. Uh, you also notice that your, we ex when the extends is colon, colon, base.html.twig. That can just say extends base.html.twig. So again, like it's just, um, it, we're, we're moving away from this weird colon, colon syntax. If you say, if, right here, when you say render random slash index to HTML twig, it looks in the app resources views directory. It's the same thing with the extends tag. You can just say extends base.html.twig. When you say that, it looks in the app resources views directory. So you don't have to change this. I'm just kind of pointing this out. This is actually the extra credit on this one. That is sufficient enough. Historically, you'll see it with two colons in front of it, that cryptic syntax. They're identical. If you don't use any colons, it looks in app resources views, and that'll work just fine. Awesome. Cool, is that working out? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, instead of like index.html.twig, that part? Yeah, really good question, yeah. So um, the, the question is, could we just say something that says sort of like, um, just sort of render the template? Because clearly we're in random controller, we're in index action, so it's a little redundant to say random slash index.html.twig. There is a annotation you can put above your controller called at template. And if you put that, control, that template, that annotation, so you'd have like at route, and below that you'd have at template. If you do that, then instead of returning this error render, you simply return the array, this array here, the array of variables you want to pass into your template, and then something else automatically renders the template for you based on a naming convention. Yep. That doesn't actually support the, I don't think, I don't think it actually supports the app resources directory yet. It's like in development right now. But yeah, so that's, you know, that's one of those like extra shortcut things that you can choose to use. No, actually, we're going to skip that. Oops. All right. So we have routes and controllers. This is cool. We're running a twig template. That's cool. So we're, the one kind of like last really, really important thing that I want to get to, we have, we have just enough time, so it's perfect, um, sort of has nothing to do with Symfony in a sense. It's all about this like term services. So before I said it a little while ago, how many of you guys were familiar with the term or idea of a service? Okay, yeah, a couple, yeah, yeah. More of you guys, you guys are more familiar with that term than you think you are, because it's a really simple idea. And it basically goes like this. Let's pretend that generating the random number in our controller takes a lot of work. Maybe we're generating a random string or it's something. Just pretend it's, we have 50 lines of code in our controller to generate that random number. So in any project, you get to a spot where you have this big code here, and you realize that you want to reuse that code somewhere else. And you go, oh no, I have this code here. I want to reuse it over here, so what do I do? 
So historically, in a very simple PHP project, you'd take those 50 lines of code, you'd put them into a function, and then you would just call that function from wherever you are. Okay? The idea of a service is that we're going to, and, and this is how you're going to do things inside of Symfony, is we're going to do that exact same thing, except those 50 lines of code, instead of creating a, a flat PHP function, you know, just function, generate random number, we're going to create a PHP class. And we're going to put a method inside of that class. So we're going to, it's the exact same idea, but we're going to move away from flat functions and move into classes that have functions inside of those classes. But other than that, it's the same basic idea. So what I want you to do first is we're going to create a new class. So the, the problem now, again, you have to kind of pretend with me, the problem now is that we want to isolate our random number generation into a separate class so that we can reuse it. So first thing is to create that new uh, file and class that I have up there. Again, if I tell you to create a random generator.php file, you automatically know in Symfony that you're going to have a class inside that file called random generator because the class name and the file name always match each other. This whole step is going to be very, uh, it, this whole step has nothing to do with Symfony. This is, is just kind of us um, taking a step towards kind of organizing our code. So steps A and B is going to be us creating a class and then I've actually already built a simple uh, function called generate string. It's a, it's a function that generates a random string that I want you guys to copy into that class. So we're kind of building a, a utility class that can generate random strings. You'll find this function inside the code itself. We have a resources directory that I made. It has nothing to do with Symfony. It's just some places that I put code for you guys. Inside there, there's a function called generate string.php. I want you just to copy the contents of that. There's just a function inside of there. Copy the contents of that file into your random generator class. I'm going to type this up in a second. But the end result is that we will have a class called random generator with a single function inside of it called generate string. Got it. Yep. Nice job. Don't forget that your every class needs a namespace on the top of it. And the namespace matches the directory structure without the SRC part. So you're going to end up with something that looks like this, except you'll actually have hopefully a real function, not three dots. So copy that function from the file I have above. Should look something like that. All we're doing is building a tool that we can use. We're not using this class yet. We're not using this function, but now we have a tool that's sitting there that we can use in a second. Once you have this, I want you to actually use it inside of your uh, controller. So here's, here's kind of the goal and just understand the goal and that it will come together. Inside of your controller, I want you to use this new function to generate a random string. And by the way, the first, I actually have it wrong here. I have a, I have a, um, I think there's like a length argument or something like there. So I want you to use that function and whatever the number is in your URL, like 5 or 10 or 20, I want you to actually pass that as the argument to generate string. So now it's not going to be a random number between 0 and 10. It's going to be a, we're going to return a random string of length 10 or of length 20. So use this function inside of your controller to get a random string and then pass that string into your twig template and render it. So again, use this function inside of your controller to get a random string pass that string into your twig template and render out the random string. So we're not generating a random number anymore, so we, get, we have to make a few changes here. This is kind of good muscle memory practice. 
The only tricky thing about this is if you use a flat function, like in old school PHP, it's very easy to use that function. You just call the function. But now that we've put this function inside of a class, it's a two-step process. First, you need to instantiate an instance of that object and then call the method on that object. The, two, the, the fact that this is two steps actually gives, gives you a lot of flexibility later, as we will see. So it looks like this. This is um, inside of our controller. So we have something like this, random generator. Oops. So the number one important thing is as soon as you start putting things in classes, you need to instantiate an instance of that. So that's why it's two steps there. First, we instantiate an instance of random generator. Random generator equals new random generator. That doesn't actually do anything. It didn't actually generate a random number. It's just creating an object. And then after that, you actually call the method on it to get your random string. Also, don't forget your use statement. That's a gotcha of namespaces. As soon as you reference that random generator class, you need to have a use statement at the top of your class for it. Now, some of you, which is actually very intelligent, um, want to make the generate string function static and do this in one step from a technical perspective. Like, that's totally fine. But this is going to give us not, we basically want to stay away from using statics. It's going to give us more flexibility later. And if we have enough time, which I think we hopefully will, I'll show you exactly why. It's actually the next thing we're going to do. So we don't want to use static or global variables anywhere. We're actually going to instantiate objects. Notice this step has nothing to do with Symfony at all. You could do this in any application, any PHP application anywhere, this process of creating classes and putting functions inside of them and instantiating them. This is just nice code organization. So this random generator class is called a service. Again, a service is just a word for a class or object, I know those aren't the same thing, but a class or an object that performs some work for you. So imagine you guys have a, a mailer class you create that helps you send emails. That would be called a service. So service is just a word we use to be a, a useful object, a tool. Um, so this is basically a service. And if you've heard of like service-oriented architecture, it's a fancy way of saying, take your functionality and put them into classes. So if you have 50 lines of code that send an email, put that into a mailer class. If you have 50 lines of code that help you log something, put that into a logger class. Just organize things by different service classes that perform an action. That's service-oriented arch service architecture, basically. So this is a service in kind of the object-oriented sense. Does that make sense? If it feels underwhelming, you're like, I don't, may, I think I get it, but it seems so simple that I'm not sure, then you get it. It's just, it's a really, really simple idea. All right, so we're going to go on to the, the next step of this. So, um, let's see here. Make sure I'm not missing anything. So one of the things that I, I've said that the second half of Symphony is all about these useful objects floating around that you can use. These are called services. So Symphony comes with a, a bunch of services already that you can use. And we're using the templating service. One of the other services that you guys can use, I'm actually going to do a few things out of order here. Another service that you guys can use is called the logger service. So Symphony has a service called logger. It also has a service called mailer and other things like that. So right now, just to see how it works, like I want you guys to log something from, in your, from within your controller. And I'm actually going to show you the code for this. So just to kind of see this working, just go into your controller somewhere. 
I'm going to use multiple lines here just for space. So there's really um, two, the two most important concepts in Symfony are the routing controller setup, cool, boring, got that, and this idea of services and Symfony's service container. So like in our last kind of like 15, 20 minutes here, we're going to uh, kind of get an intro to that second very, very important concept. I'll explain this code in a second. But if you do this, if you want to see if this is actually working, um, you can refresh the page. And remember how you can click uh, the 200 on the bottom to go into the profiler? One of the things along the left there is a logs tab, and it'll show you all of the logs for this page. So you can either try that and refresh the page and trust me that it's working, or if you want, you can go, go into the profiler and see that this is actually logging that message. It also logs to a, um, an app slash log slash dev dot log file if you want to tail that. But the point is this is a logger is a service, a useful object that's just there out of the, out of the box with Symphony that you can use. Cool? So the critical thing here is um, this guy, the container. How many of you guys have heard of the term like service container or dependency injection container? That's yes, I thought a couple of you guys. So it's, a, it's basically the idea of imagine we have, imagine we've done a really good job of creating services to organize our application. We have like a random generator class, we have a logger class, we have a mailer class, we've created all these different classes. Now the only, not the only, but one disadvantage of our setup right now is that when you want to create the, when you want to generate a random string, you need to actually instantiate the random generator. If you want to send an email, you need to instantiate the mailer class. You actually need to do the work to kind of like create these objects. So let's say that we decide to take all of our useful objects. Let's say we have 50 services. We're going to create, we're going to um, take all of those useful objects and then put them to one object called a container. And then the basic idea being that if you want to use the mailer service or the logger service, you just need to get the container object and say, give me the logger service or give me the mailer service. And it would return to you an instantiated version of the logger class or the mailer class or whatever other classes. So it's kind of a shortcut. We're like, okay, let's centralize all of our objects into this one thing, into this one place. And then if we have that one thing, we can kind of get those objects out of it. So specifically in Symfony, actually, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, can we do the same as for routing? Uh, can, we, can we create our own content? Yeah. yeah, you totally can, yep. And you have an import that's like the same way, and you'll see imports at the top of config.yaml. Um, he's like a half step ahead, so that should not make sense to you yet, what, what, is, what he's asking, which is okay. Um, so Symfony has a container object, and Symfony already has uh, a bunch of services that are pre uh, pre-made and ready for us to use, and it puts them all inside of this one object called a container. When you're inside of a controller, Symfony's container, this again, this is called a service container or a dependency injection container, um, is available as this arrow container. Now, so let me back up and say this again. The really important concept we're getting at here is that Symfony has a single object, probably the most important object in all of Symfony, called the container. The only thing that you can do with this container is call git on it. It's an object, but it's basically just an array. It's an array of objects. So inside of the service container, there is a service whose nickname is logger. So if you want to get the logger object, you say this arrow container arrow git logger. If you want to get the mailer out, it's this arrow container arrow git mailer. And that would give you an instance of like uh, some Symfony mailer object. Even um, when you guys render templates, how you guys are calling like this arrow render, behind the scenes, all that the render function does if you guys open Symfony's um, base controller, you would see this. All that render function does, it's just a shortcut to go out to a service called templating and call a method on it. 
So the whole second half of Symphony with these useful objects is finding out what uh, objects, what services the container has inside of it. Oh, there's a mailer service, there's a logger service, there's a templating service. And then figuring out kind of, okay, what methods can I call on it? Um, even like, for example, in Easy Publish, which again, I'm not an Easy Publish expert, but I just, this is how you set things up. Um, Symphony comes with a bunch of built-in services. When you use Easy Publish, it's going to have a lot of those same services plus more services specific to Easy Publish. So there's probably some services in there for helping you find content. So if you wanted to find, uh, look up a certain content record, there's probably services in the container that specifically help you do that. So it's just a bunch of tools inside of there. If you guys go back to your uh, virtual machine, your terminal there, you remember earlier when we ran the app console router colon debug? We have a similar command to show us all of the services inside the container. Because there's no way we would just know that there's a service called logger or mailer, you, you know, short of looking at the docs. But go back into your terminal. And try that command. App console container colon debug. By the way, if you just run php app slash console by itself without container debug, it'll list all of the commands. So you don't have to remember these commands. Just run app slash console, it'll list the commands, then you'll see it. Container debug has a, uh, returns a very short list of about 207 services. So these are all the tools that you have out of the box in Symfony. And if you hear of Symfony as like being big and difficult, it's probably in part because of this, because like it actually comes with a lot of tools. You could use none of these, but there are actually a lot of tools. And in reality, you're only going to use about five to 10 of these. The vast majority of these are more subtle services for advanced edge cases or things like that. But you'll see logger inside of here. And on the right side, it also shows you the class name. So if we had no documentation at all uh, on like, for example, on how to log in Symfony, you could use container colon debug, see that there's a logger service, and then you could actually look at the class name and just open that, that class in your editor, go find that class in Symfony and just see what methods it has on it. You know, that's not necessarily the easiest way to do things, but you can use this tool to just kind of figure out everything that's going on inside of Symfony. Cool? All right, so all this is to say that there's two reasons that this is important. One, everything in Symfony or Easy Publish or anything that uses uh, Symfony, everything is done with a service. Even um, uh, all the routing that happens magically for us, the fact that they, a route is matched in the beginning, there's actually a router service that does that. So 100% of the functionality is in a service. So it, this is important, number one, because if you want to know how to do something in Symfony or do something in Easy Publish, the answer is in one of these services. And if you can figure out which service is the key to that, then you can, you're, you're really, really dangerous because you can do whatever you want. Um, the second reason is that we're going to add our own services to the container. So our random generator right now is just a class. We can actually register it with Symfony so that when you run container debug, there's a random generator entry inside of there. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to walk you guys through the syntax of doing that. So first, let me say there's Nothing technically wrong with this approach of saying random generator equals new random generator uh, whenever you need to use it. We're, we're going to go one step lazier and teach Symfony's container how to instantiate the random generator for us. So that here, instead of instantiating the random generator, we can just say this arrow container arrow get random generator and it will create that object for us. One of the nice side benefits of the service container is that if you ask for a service 10 times on a single request, it only instantiates at one time. So that's kind of like another side benefit. So if we ask for the random gen, once we register it, if we ask for the random generator 10 times, it only creates one of them, which makes sense. We don't need 10 random generators. All right. So, so open up your um, app config, config.yaml file. So again, Symfony is two pieces. Now we're going to work on that second piece and add our own service into the container. The way you do that is with a services key. You can put this anywhere in this file. I'd probably put it um, 
after the import lines that are on the top. And that's all you need. Just with that there, you should be able to run container debug again and see a service whose nickname is my random generator show up on that list. So what we're doing here is we're teaching Symphony's container how to instantiate our object. And obviously it needs to know, all it needs to know is the class name. We tell Symphony's container the class name of our, of our uh, uh, ra random generator, then it's going to be able to instantiate it. And it's able to do that because we don't have a construct function yet that makes things more difficult. So just with this, it's now registered in Symphony's container. And you should be able to run container colon debug and see my random generator inside of there. Yeah? And of course, in a real application, you could have many more services under this key. So you have my random generator, then below that you'd have another thing called my mailer. So you can have as many services as you want under this key. Awesome. So how can we use this inside of our controller then? Hold on a second, I'm gonna copy some stuff. So how does our code change in our controller? Does anybody have it yet? We don't need to instantiate a new random generator anymore. How can we get that service? Oh yeah, that's the shortcut way, yeah. So this, this will seem, again, um, like kind of an underwhelming step. Because we're only just kind of, well, we're not even saving a line of code. We're just doing one step just a little differently. Use multiple lines again just for space. So, as soon as we have that thing in our service container, we can get it this arrow, container arrow, get. Because again, the container is just basically an array of objects. This key up here, obviously I just invented this. That could be anything. And you know, just make sure that that lines up with what you have there. Yep? Do we still need to use the namespace for the random generator? Good question. You do not. So he's asking about the use statement that you have at the top of your controller. It's no longer needed because you're no longer actually referencing the class name anywhere inside of your controller. It doesn't hurt anything. It's okay. It's still there. But yeah, good question. And this should work exactly the same as before. Yeah? And it's, it's okay if you don't see the big advantages yet, because there's the biggest advantage we haven't actually looked at yet. Good. Question is, what if I register my service with, a, uh, one that, uh, with a name that already exists, like logger? You'd actually override it. And that's kind of by design. So any core Symphony services or easy published services can be easily overridden in your code. You can just completely replace it. There are other ways to, to uh, do that as well, but you could just entirely replace the service. And, and you wouldn't have to do anything special. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the next thing. Yeah, this would not work. So this works because we don't have a public function construct in our random generator that takes arguments. When we construct our random generator, there are no arguments that are passed there. So the big advantage that I said that is not obvious yet of this method is if you have, let's say we, we have this. We don't use the service container. And we have this. 
And we have this line here in 10 places in our code. And then all of a sudden, we realize that our random generator needs a constructor argument. Let's say like a, a random seed that you, need, that you must pass to random generator. So once you've used this in 10 places, you all of a sudden open random generator, give it a public function underscore underscore construct, you know, dollar sign seed or something like that. Well now, as soon as we've done that, this is broken in all 10 places, of course, because now you need to pass an argument to it. And to make it worse, it now means that in all 10 places in your code, you need to somehow figure out what the seed is, because perhaps we've stored the seed as a configuration value. So in all 10 places in your code, you need to say, okay, how do I get the configuration value from here? So you've kind of done all this work. So the big advantage of using this method here is if, and we haven't, I haven't shown you how to do it yet, but if our random generator gets a construct argument later, we only need to change one small thing here, and this will start working automatically again. So basically, you can see here, when we say this arrow container arrow get my random generator, um, we're not, I don't wanna say here. When you say this, we're saying give me an instance of my, my random generator service. I don't care if it has zero constructor arguments or 50 constructor arguments, just give me that object. The whole complication of how we actually teach Symfony's container, whether it has arguments or not, is gonna happen right here with a arguments key, which I'm gonna leave blank for now. But that's the way that you tell Symfony if you have constructor arguments. So if you had a single constructor argument, which was like that, um, that C, Actually, so that's what, what it would look like if you had a constructor argument with a uh, construct function with two arguments. Notice I changed it there, but my controller, all of my parts of my code don't need to change at all. They just say, just give me the random generator. I don't care what, how you instantiate it because we have it now a centralized place to configure that. All right. We're, I think, already past time, but I, wanna, I need to take like five minutes to show you guys one last thing, which is gonna be the last little piece here, which is, what if I want to, um, and, and this is not all gonna make sense, this is like the last very, very critical piece of this thing. What if I need to use a service, like the logger, from inside my random generator? Okay, so. Da, da, da. Right now, we know that we can use the logger like that from within a controller. Okay, the controller is special because it's the one place in your code where you have access to the container via this arrow container. If we copied this code here into our random generator, is that going to work? No. Why not? Yeah, and so in this case, this is not the controller class, it's the random generator. Does the random generator have a container property? It's your class, it has nothing to do with Symfony at all. There is no magical container property. This will not work. So this is, uh, uh, one of the terms you'll hear thrown around is dependency injection. This is a very fancy, scary term for a very simple idea, which is basically this. If you are inside of a service class, like random generator, and you realize that you need some external resource, like another service or maybe a configuration value, you will pass it as an argument to that service's construct function. So what we're gonna do is, as soon as we realize that this needs a logger, we're gonna create a public function construct and a private property called logger. And we're just gonna set it on that property. So as soon as we realize that this service needs some external uh, object or configuration value, maybe it needs like a database password or something, we add a construct argument, or a second or a third, however many arguments you need. And all we do is each argument is stored as a property. So later when we call generate string, this just becomes
this arrow logger arrow info. It says, hey, whenever we were instantiated, whoever instantiated us was forced to pass in a logger. Now, we're not type hinting that argument, but you could type hint the construct argument. Whoever instantiated us was forced to pass in a logger. We stored it on a logger property. So by the rules of object-oriented land, by the time generate string is called, that logger property has a logger object on it. So we can call this arrow logger arrow info or whatever other methods on it. Now, this will not work immediately. If, you, if your entire world is this class, like if you're building a library, and your entire thing you're worried about is making sure that this class is perfect, you don't care who's using it, this is perfect. You've pushed the burden of passing the logger onto the person that's using it, on the person that's actually instantiating it. So basically, if you just made this change to your code right now and refresh the page, you'd get a huge error. Because Symfony's container still thinks that your, log or your um, random generator service has no construct arguments. Right, because we have, where'd it go? We basically have this situation right now. So right now we, have a constru we do have a construct function on a random generator, but we're telling Symphony's container, hey, when I ask for my random generator, create a new random generator object, but don't pass it any constructor arguments. So like any PHP code, that's just going to explode. So the key is just that. So when you want to pass arguments to a service, if you just type that, that will literally pass the string logger to the first argument of your constructor, which is not what we want. Um, but that's valid. Sometimes you just have arguments that are just strings. But if you want it to be a service, the kind of magic, this is a symphony specific thing, is you put the at symbol. As soon as you put at there, it says, no, 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 no. When you instantiate the random generator, go get the logger service and pass it as the first argument when instantiating it. So what's cool about this is that let's say that by the time we ask for my random generator in the controller, let's say that the logger service hasn't even been instantiated yet because no, nobody has asked the container for the logger service. Well, at this moment, the container's smart enough to say, okay, you need my random generator? Okay, wait. I need to create the logger service first, go instantiate the logger service, and then pass the logger service into my random generator. So you may have a string of objects that need each other. It's going to take care of instantiating things in the correct order in order to um, create this my random generator. So how do you pass the logger objects to the, the get my random generator? You, you don't, you, uh, good question, okay. So you, don't. So this right here is how we instantiate it. This does not change. Symphony is now smart enough, though, that when you say git my random generator, behind the scenes, it says new random generator, open parentheses, and it passes the logger in there for you. So he, all you need to say here, you're, you're, sort, of, it's, you're sort of purposefully um, dumb in your controller. You say, give me the random generator. I don't care if it has zero constructor arguments or 15 constructor arguments. Give me the random generator. Symphony then reads this configuration and says, OK, in order to create the random generator or the my random generator service, I need to instantiate this class and pass it the logger service as the first argument. So all of the configuration to how my logger or my random generator is created is done here. It's this thing, it's this right here. Can I try? Can I try, Ryan? Yeah, go for it. Uh, so it's about the way how Symfony resolves dependencies. Uh, Symfony reads your uh, configuration and uh, it builds a dependency tree. So when uh, dependency injection container, when you ask for this service, it says, okay, I need to instantiate this class and it reads configuration, okay, these are the arguments. And then, oh, this is the logger, the logger service. Uh, this at sign is a special sign that tell, tells Symfony that this is another service. So okay, let's find the configuration for this service. And it parses configuration further. 
and it will find similar uh, configuration for logger, where the logger will be the key. And then it will see which is the class, associate logger, and again, for the logger, it will ask for its arguments, and that's on and on and on uh, until it resolves all dependencies. And then build that back and return the ready object to you. So it's about a dependency tree. Uh, this service in, in particular is provided by a uh, logger bundle. And it, if you open up kernel, you will see that this bundle is included. So it will find the configuration for this bundle. So if you look at the source code for uh, monolog bundle, right, you will find the configuration for this service, which looks similar like configuration for our service. Is that enough? Yeah, but I just need one more clarification. How, how do I uh, then, if I don't want a service or a string or a number, I need a variable to pass on to the, the service? Yeah, like you will just like delete a... this special sign and you will assign the actual string. For example, if you want to uh, pass here a string uh, job, you will just write that down, that string. That's okay, but I need to, for example, I need to create a variable, which is an object, which doesn't use a service. Which, I don't know, I create, I create a class, and I have a variable, which is of that object. Okay. I pass it to the service. Ah, okay, okay, okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. Well, there is a mechanism for That's a good this. question. Yeah. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think there's an easier answer to that. One is 99% of the time, that other object will itself also be a service. Of course, you could choose not to, but it usually will be. If, if, it's, not, if it's not, because it just doesn't make sense, like for example, it's, um, it's like a product object, yeah. like not, it's, not, it's not a service, I could have 50 of these, I don't register it, then it's probably something that you're gonna pass to the function, not the constructor. It would be like um, calling like, uh, having a service called like a database connection and you ha calling a method on it called save product. And so it's when you actually call the method on it, you pass it that object, not the constructor. So constructor is going to be like global services and configuration. And then when you call the actual method, you'll pass like things that are specific to that method call. Okay, so, so the rule of thumb is uh, create functions for variables, which I need to put into the service and uh, just call other services to pass on to the constructor. Mm -hmm. the yep. Okay. Yep. And it, it'll feel pretty natural, uh, the differentiation, because obviously it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. You'd agree that, like, if, in my example, the product object example, to, to pass that to the constructor. So you're like, wait, no, it's save product is different every time I call it. Yeah. I just need to clarify. No, you're good, man. Yeah, you're totally good. Well, yeah. this, is, this is actually a pretty advanced uh, topic because there is actually a mechanism called compiler passes that you can use to achieve similar what you had in mind, but it's really complicated and uh, it overcomes the symphony basic topic. But there are some mechanisms that you can use to inject some dependencies that are available before container compiles the dependencies. Uh, so there are some ways to achieve this, but it's, it overcomes this topic, yeah. Yeah, and, and probably what you want is just what we talked about, but yeah, there's this, this of course goes infinitely deep, like anything else. Um, last thing I, I just want to show you guys is that um, you guys, I just opened up a, a file that's in the cache directory of our project, so Symfony caches things in an app slash cache directory. It happens automatically, you don't need to worry about it. But ultimately, all of this YAML configuration for how you instantiate the service uh, random generator is ultimately compiled down to a single cache file. So you guys actually have this file that I opened in your project as well, so it's not like this is special. Um, but basically what I'll show you is, it's a little bit smaller. And I'm not worried about you guys connecting the dots as to how this happened. But ultimately, when you say, uh, this arrow container arrow get my random generator, there is actually code somewhere that looks like this. It's actually all of this crazy configuration eventually compiles down to raw PHP code that does exactly what we would expect. It says new app bundle slash service slash random generator, and then it passes it, the logger service inside of it. 
So there's a lot of like ideas floating around, but ultimately it compiles down to the exact same code that we would use if we were instantiating the random generator manually inside of the controller. Cool? All right, I'm way, way over time. Uh, thank you guys very, very much. If you guys have more questions, oh, um, on Friday, we're doing a uh, kind of a continued session in the afternoon on Symphony. Um, we're going to do stuff with commands and kind of like some other more advanced things. So if you guys want, we'll kind of keep going there. So thank you very much. And also, sorry, I interrupted. There is a, there we go. This is uh, for this session, but also all sessions. There's a, um, a way that you guys can vote on, or vote and, and kind of uh, rate the sessions. And there's also like some really good prizes if you guys do that. The more times you guys rate the sessions, the more entrances you get into the drawing. So cool. So thank you guys.